Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Craig Small, Product Line Manager at Bose Professional. Here today with my two guests to talk about L1 Pro Systems and the Mobile DJ. Um, the track that you heard to uh, lead us into our uh, discussion today is uh, a bit of a departure from DJ-centric, but it is it features our first guest, John Strader, uh, otherwise known as DJ John Strader. Hey, John, how are you doing? Hello. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And then our other guest uh, is actually one of our Bose sales representative uh, in the southwest um, area of the United States, uh, Marco Araujo. Hello, Marco. Yes. Thank you. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Marco is also uh, a really talented DJ. Um, so you guys are going to be our subject matter experts today as we talk about the new L1 Pro systems and uh, being a mobile DJ. So what we like about them how easy or not easy they are to use, um, and just your overall experiences as as DJs. Excellent. That track, John, was uh, that was called No Trigger, right? No, no, your band is No Trigger. The track was called Holy Punks, right? Yep, yep, that is correct. Being a DJ, you should probably have a remix version of that, right? Yeah, I'm working on it currently, actually. Something with the sub octave in there? Yeah, there's lots of sub drops. <laughs> Cool. Um, so first we want to talk about, um, we're going to break this down into a few sections. Um, first, portability. Um, and that being like just kind of like load in, um, loading into your vehicle, and then uh, uh, setting up once you get to the venue. And then of course, breaking down and loading, loading back out at night again. So we're going to start off with just a, a video segment that we created. That's a, it's a time lapse, which is kind of funny that's a time lapse because the whole thing only takes about 50 seconds, but <laughs> right. um, it's really loading in and out um, a, an L1 Pro 32 system with the Sub 2. So let's take a look at this video uh, just to kind of give folks out there an ex uh, some context of just how easy this thing is to set up. Cool. Good. This is me, as you can see, with my Sub 2. And then power stand, bottom array section, and top array section, and then connecting the submatch cable, and boom, that's it. Everything in one trip. You're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's so great. It's so quick and easy. So when, so John and Marco are um, great subject matter experts because you guys use Bose uh, Model Two and L1S systems and have used them for many years. Yeah. Um, John, you were actually uh, one of our beta testers, and Marco, you've had samples for quite a while now. So, right. why don't why, just want to talk about your experience? Um, and Model Twos and One Ss are awesome systems. They, those are super portable for their time. But we want to talk about. Um, we'll go to you first, John. Maybe you can share just some thoughts about um, your your portability experience with the new systems. And you have, um, if I'm remembering correctly, you have two L1 Pro 32s and two Sub Twos, right? I do. Yeah. And I also have been using for the past few years, the, the L1S system with the B2 base. So having the experience with those and then transferring over to the new, the new systems has been absolutely incredible. Just as far as like the portability still goes, you know, I, I do a lot of my traveling in an SUV. I don't mess around with trailers. And what's great is like these two systems fit so well, either in a trunk or if you got a hatchback, or, you know, just like me, I, I got a pretty big SUV, um, throw them on a, throw them on a cart and you're basically wheeled in, in one trip. Uh, it's, it's great. It's super easy to set up as well. So one of our, um, one of the, uh, comments in a review online was a user who said that they thought that they had forgot something because it was so, <laughs> it was so light yeah. easy to bring in and out. Yeah. Um, how about you, Marco? How, how do you. What are your thoughts on the load? right? Well, that's one of the first impressions. I mean, it, it's it's amazing how you guys put so much more power and more um, uh, audio quality in a lighter uh, setup. Um, you know, it's um, even with the Model Two, it was pretty easy to carry it. Uh, you know, from the car to the venue, but this one is so much easier. Um, it still feels like uh, a heavy duty unit, but it's very light, very light. Do you have a favorite thing about 
the portability aspect? Either one of you guys, John? Well, it's, uh, it's yeah, I mean, that can I, break my back. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's great is that you know it's you don't have to worry about stands. You know, you don't have That's to. Good. Yeah, there's there's one thing that I just noticed you guys put out about about these is the 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 optional carry bag, which you know you can put the line array and the the base in, which is great. It actually it actually looks like a like a guitar bag, you know. And just having two of those, it's gonna make it's gonna make setup and loadout and transportation even quicker. So I'm excited to get my hands on a couple of those. Yes. Yeah, about the breaking your back, Marco. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, a Pro 32 is 60% lighter than a Model 2. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, a Model 2 wasn't like really heavy, um, but relatively speaking, like it's just it's just so much less effort to, you know, to, from vehicle to venue and then back out again. Right, <laughs> right. Um, yeah. It, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, you you can you can notice that, and 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 that's it's amazing. I mean, I think I think um, it's kind of like magic how you guys do that, but yeah, it's it's pretty good, and I think our customers are gonna love that. Cool. The uh, yeah, the Pro Thirty Two just started shipping uh, last week with sub ones. Uh, the sub twos should be here early February. Mm -hmm. um, and just to kind of set the record straight, we're we're probably going to mostly talk about the L1 Pro 32 and sub twos because we're talking DJs, but um, DJs could use an L1 Pro 16. That's also a really powerful system uh, with the same 10 by 18 inch sub, right. just in a little bit yep. more compact of a configuration. And then also an, an L1 Pro 8, um, you know, for small rooms or also for like a monitoring system. I know that John, yep. sometimes you said you use uh, an S1 as a monitor. Oh yeah. So, um, you know, just imagine an L8 or an L1 Pro 8 as your monitor facing you versus facing the audience. You can kind of get yep. that that same kind of uh, dispersion in just a smaller package. Right. I, I I can tell you in the in the industry, uh, uh, especially within within DJs, used to use the L1 Compact on uh, on ceremonies or um, you know cocktail hour. They switch into S1 Pro because uh, the easy, uh, easy setup with the battery included. And now I think they're gonna take uh, advantage of the L1 Pro 8 because of uh, a little bit more power and similar to the compact, but the, you know, the, the brand new features they car it has. Awesome. Um, John, you've got, uh, yeah, you still have the, the Pro 32s. You had, um, I think you had a Pro 8 initially, right? Yeah. Yep. Did you end yeah. up using that for what, what I what I what I think is great about this whole new line, as far as like the the mixing board goes, it's the same across all the all the units, right? Which is which is nice to have that versatility on every single line. Um, but what I like is just like what Marco said, like we're able to supply these smaller systems for different applications, whether it be a cocktail hour, whether it be a dinner room or, you know, a, a ceremony outside, uh, these systems push for, for what they need and especially whatever application that you have them in. Cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the form factor uh, and how it differs from a Model 2 or a 1S. In particular, um, we have done away with the, the extending legs on the bottom of the power stand. Right. Um, so the 1S and the Model 2 were heavier. Um, and so those, um, we have what's called a horizontal force requirement so that when you walk over to a unit and you push on the side of it, um, it has to pass a certain requirement so that it doesn't tip over. Obviously that could be bad right. for your DJ gig. And also, you know, you don't want to injure anybody with falling towers. Um, because the L1 Pro 32 is so much lighter, we actually didn't need those legs, um, which just helps make the system more portable. So it still passes those same horizontal force requirements as a, as a 1S and as a Model 2, uh, minus the mm -hmm. extending legs. Um, so the, the, also the fact that uh, primarily because of the, the, that dr dramatic weight reduction, um, and you'll also notice that the just the size of the drivers are... Uh, much thinner. Those 32 drivers from uh, ceiling to floor um, in the articulated array design 
whereas the Model 2 and the 1S drivers were like two and a quarter, a little bit bigger, um, which just adds to the mass and that overall weight. Um, any um, any comments, John, on um, stability or concerns about stability? Oh, yeah, I have no concerns at all. I mean, I've had these out in the field, too, which is which is great. Um, and the stability is it's it's perfect. The one thing about that bayonet design that was an issue with me is just, you know, sometimes people would walk into it like a little because they're sticking out almost, you know, where people would be walking sometimes. So having this design is way more compact and way more sleek. And also the the weight factor is is huge. That's a big that's a big noticeable difference between that between that design and the and this new this new design. How about you, Marco? Any yeah, thoughts? I, yeah, I um I noticed that you know no no legs uh, like the Model Two, but um it, it feels very stable and uh, you know once you set it up, it, it doesn't move at all. It's it, it it's good. Awesome. Um, let's talk about Submatch since we're talking about the uh, the setup. Uh, mm -hmm. Submatch yeah. is a uh, proprietary cable that delivers power and audio from your L1 Pro 32 to a Sub1 or Sub2. And you can also, you can link a second subwoofer via the Submatch through port on the back of a Sub1 or Sub2. Um, so Submatch is, um, there are some videos online that you can go. And actually we're gonna queue up, let's queue up that Submatch connection video just a quick little video to show the viewers how easy that connection is. So here you go, connecting to the L1 Pro 32. And yeah. connecting to the sub two. Yeah, that, that's one of my f favorite features of the system. Uh, when I saw the cable and you just push in, it locks, and you have to do anything else. And so easy to unlock. I mean, it's it's a great it's a great um, it's a great new feature, you know, carrying the power and the uh, and the signal on the same cable. Yeah, I was just gonna say the same thing. Less is more in my department, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, the idea here is you know um, just as few things as possible plugged into the wall, uh, simplifying. Yeah, that too. Uh, cable management. Um, in addition to um, just being really economical with um, a w with all of our connections. Um, but what's great, what, what's great that you're offering as well is you do have the standard plug that you can use on the base bin as well as a line out on right. the mixing board. So you have both options at all times, which is fantastic, yeah. which the previous models did not. Yeah, if you, if you forget your mm -hmm. submatch cable, Submatch cable, or you're going to connect a sub one or sub two to an S one, for example. Um, yeah, there's mm -hmm. an IEC port, plug it into the wall, and then you can just go analog with the two line out or line in connections on the back of those sub ones and sub twos. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, the, the cable that. itself, it's a it's a 1.5 meters, um, which is long enough for users to. Um, put two sub ones or sub twos in cardioid mode, which we're going to talk about in a later section. Cool. Um, but it's it's not a long cable. Again, we're all about economy here, but it's it's plenty long for for what we need it to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, before we move on to the next, um, any any DJ tip, tips and tricks, some setup hacks that you guys want to want to throw out there. Ooh, Marco, you can go. Ahead. Well, I, I, I mean, I think when we were talking about it, it it's easier with these. Uh, for example, with the Model Two, um, the cable was uh, a little bit, you know, short, and it has to be like certain distance from the Model Two all the time. With this one, you can actually move the subwoofer a little bit. Let's say DJs like to put a center in front of the their DJ boot and have the, the line array in the side. So um, now being a self-power subwoofer, you can go analog and extend that into the center of your dance floor, the DJ boot dance floor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. another feature that they're gonna, they're gonna love it. Yeah, I would have to say the setup hack, you guys already took care of it. It's basically having that one cable. Cool. Yes. Yeah, it's great. So let's move on to like a typical setup 
um, typical like large venue setup or a typical like cocktail room setup, um, stereo versus mono. So, uh, John, what's your, you've actually done some, some events this past summer. Um, events have been a little harder to come by, or I should say a lot mm -hmm. harder to come by, uh, this past mm -hmm. year for obvious reasons, but you have had some DJ gigs. Um, so talk us through, um, so like a stereo setup, for example, for a larger venue, what are you, yeah. you using? Yeah, typically for, for stereo setups, if it's a larger room, I'm always using two systems, one on either side of me, which would fill, you know, a standard ballroom or, a, you know, a, a medium sized venue. If, if the venue is, is smaller and the, the guest count is, is smaller, typically I'd bring out one. I'd bring out one of these systems and it's it's very powerful enough to get the to get the point across of, uh, you know, of, of throw of clarity of you know bass response it's great um and typically if if i had two i would be running stereo and one you 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 could run mono and it's going to sound flawless stereo you're going just out of your dj mixer left and right right left and right yep and with the programs i use i have the option of switching between mono signal to each speaker or complete stereo separation are you stacking your subs together under a table or are you just keeping your array and subs together on each side of your i keep them on the sides but once we get into the cardioid segment we can talk about how they'll have the need to be stacked okay how about you marco talking yeah. through um, some of your setups yeah so um something there i think is very important especially for DJs to to understand is the even tone coverage that these uh, systems produce um, so position and this can be like you can put it in a corner of the of, of the of the room and you will have the even tone coverage or um, you know you can do a stereo with no problem um, we we like to stack like you say stack the subwoofers on on the center of the of the of the DJ booth to hit the dance floor uh, with more power in there um, so, but even if you use just one with a with a subwoofer or two subwoofers together, uh, you get you get a really really good even tone coverage in, in the whole room. Um, some experience that I had, um, I'm I'm very very fan on on the back in the day systems when in the 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 dance clubs they used to have the sound system not next to the DJ but in the back. And that will force the actual crowd to move forward to the dance floor. Um, and I did that sometimes. Uh, uh, we, we did that one time at the DJ Expo in Atlantic City, where I set up two Model 2s in the front of the, of the booth facing the DJ. And people couldn't hear anything. Like, we didn't bother any, any of the other vendors because the sound was coming to us. And once the people walk into the booth, they will feel it that, um, that's all the sound and, and it will move them to get closer to the DJ. So it's, 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 a, it's a very good way to experiment with the sound with, with the L1 Pro systems. Awesome. Yeah. Um, have you had a chance to, to use cardioid mode at all, John? Uh, I haven't. I have tested it in, in a room. Um, but what's great is when we're getting into that cardioid mode, there's a lot of venues out there, whether we're playing outside or if they're in, you know, like a, an area where it's residential. A lot of times as DJs, we have to actually sign waivers. We have to sign waivers about decibel limits and, you know, whether or not we're bringing in subwoofers, because that's the sound that typically carries, you know, pretty far. Um, but with the cardioid mode, we're able to direct the bass where we need it to the dance floor with canceling out the bass that's going to the rear, which is great. Yeah, so um, for those not familiar with the cardioid mode application, um, the L1 Pro 32, where the sub one or sub two is a separate uh, component, um, we have the ability when you're using two sub ones or two sub twos to stack them in, in opposite facing directions and engage cardioid mode, which is directional bass. So these low frequencies, um, as John described, are omnidirectional. So if you're standing behind a subwoofer stack, you're hearing the same thing that folks standing in front of a subwoofer stack are. And right. if you're playing a wedding reception, 
that spills into the evening hours and you've got some residential um, areas next nearby, um, you may upset some folks. Um, yeah. Cardioid right. mode helps to keep that energy focused. Um, and we'll, essentially, so we're going to play, we're going to play a video in just a second here, but this cardioid mode configuration negates the rear firing energy by 10 decibels. Um, yeah, which is that's great. Significant. Um, so but, while, which is what it's being used in large venues as well, right? Yeah. Cardioid mode, um, Actually. has been used by, you know, pro sound engineers for, for many years. Mm -hmm. Um, we just, we're trying to make it, um, more accessible, you could say, just a little bit right. easier to access instead of um, having to rely on, uh, you know, sound engineering expertise per se. So we just right. stack them correctly, engage the cardioid mode on the rear fi firing subwoofer, and you have directional base. Yeah, <clears> that's right. great. And it's a, it's a well-fined direct base. And what, what John was saying about uh, why uh, some venues make you sign a waiver is because uh, you know, they don't know what kind of woofer they're going to bring. And it's that low, it's loose yeah. base, the rattles, all the, uh, the glasses and the bottles. And so, yeah, uh, yeah no, this is a well fine tuned base that you will get. Anybody ever come up to you after a gig and say, you violated uh, this line of your, your agreement? <laughs> Not your one using Bose products. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> right. um, so we're going to play a, a video um that shows so there's a wide shot let me describe describe it first because i'm not going to talk during the video there's there is some audio um and total disclaimer the audio was recorded on a pair of shore sm58s um, which are vocal microphones so they're not really going to capture the bandwidth of the system the idea is just to kind of give you uh, to give listeners um uh, some context of of how we negate that rear firing energy um so you're going to see a wide shot of an L1 Pro 32, um, looking uh, looking at it sideways, an SM58 in the front of the stack, and then an SM58 behind the stack. <clears throat> and then um, I'm gonna toggle. So what you see on screen is what you're listening to in the audio track. I've isolated, I panned the front track to the left and the rear, the front mic to the left and the, the rear microphone to the right. Um, so we'll play it, we'll play it again just in case it um, All right. Make total sense, but uh, we can roll that video. So hopefully that translated fairly well in your headphones uh, or your laptop speakers. But when you see the the title on the bottom of the screen that says cardioid mode engaged, mm -hmm. you would hear uh, a, a definite drop off in the energy in that rear facing microphone. Um, to really experience cardioid mode, you have to be there in person and you have to be standing behind the subwoofers. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, um, for sure. So it's... Uh, it's just it's it's a feature that we're really excited about, and um, right. in in discussions with um, with you, John, and other DJs and Marco, uh, leading up to the the the, the launch of the products. Um, as a lot of our viewers know, we have um, user groups that we engage when engage with throughout the entire development process. So we we're talking to mobile DJs, we're talking to singer songwriters, and we're talking to uh, folks in bands. We're talking to even uh, houses of worship. We're talking to public speaking um venues uh so that we're not designing products in a bubble and right. um, the the cardioid mode was i remember that first dj user night where you guys were talking about those events where yeah um, you just you you know you you had complaints from the neighbors and you just wanted to be able to kind of control everything a little bit more so yeah cardioid mode is just one more tool that you can help to keep your yeah, energy focused great. yeah that's it great. really is the ver the versatility is it's just mind blowing on this new line. It's it's so great. There's a lot of, you know, just like you mentioned, all those different applications. Everybody's taken care of now. It's it's awesome. 
and not just DJ applications too, like for live sound reinforcement. Exactly. Yeah. If you want to keep Absolutely. the low frequency feedback off the stage, um, just engage cardioid mode and uh, same thing, energy, low energy focused out, out towards, towards the audience. And uh, we can have a relatively peaceful uh, mix on stage. Yep. <clears throat> so can't, yep. can't wait to start using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah same. Marco, we need to same. get you uh, <laughs> one more subwoofer, right? right. Yeah, we, we should get them when, when we can do the events outdoor, <laughs> outdoors. So um, yeah. I also just about typical tying back to typical DJ setups. I know you guys use DJ consoles that are the majority of your of your interactions with your systems. But um, are you how are you using the the L1 Pro 32's onboard mixer um, and the L1 Mix app? John, I'll start with you. Uh, yeah, with the the mix app is great. I think that's another thing that you know we should definitely bring up is that these these systems have the Bluetooth capability um, as far as controlling a lot of the different uh, settings through through an app. Um, it's great. We have the live, the music, and and the the speech option, um, which is great for again any sort of application that you're you're involved in. And you're able to control the treble, the bass, the volume, and just having to be able to walk out into the middle of a room and adjust volume right on your phone. And if, you, especially if you're a single op and you're just out there by yourself and you don't have an assistant or a technician, it's such a great, super user-friendly tool to, to have with these systems. How about you, Marco? How are yeah, you using I'm, the Mixer and the L1 Mix app? I, the first thing, you know, absolutely, user friendly and um i think the app is going to help a lot of people understand tone match uh setup for uh it's so easy to have uh you know the preset set up the, the 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 inputs on your on your mixer all set up so you can load it into the unit uh, very fast so it's i mean it's it's pretty good it's, it's um it's it's like extension of the, of the unit in in your in, in your hand, so it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty good. So what um what John was talking about were um what we call system EQs, um also known as yep. house curves in the right. business. Um, so system EQs on your L1 Pro 32's mixer that optimize for um, recorded music if you're a mobile DJ, or or there's a live setting if you're performing live. And then a public speaking option as well, and of course you have the option of uh, of neutral or flat. Um, the recorded music just gives you a little bump in the low end. Live music gives you a little notch in the in the mid range, and then public speaking gives you a little bit even more of a notch in the mid range. Um, the idea mm -hmm. again just being to optimize. <clears throat> and Marco was talking about the access to tone match library of presets that you have with right. the album mix. So on an L1 Pro 32, you have the uh, you have two settings per for channels one and two. You have a mic setting, which is a dynamic uh, handheld microphone uh, tone match preset, and then you have instrument, which is a piezo acoustic guitar setting. But when you when you engage L1 Mix, you have the option of selecting customized presets, such as um, if I use a Shure SM58, I can call up an SM58 that optimizes that channel for this specific microphone. Um, and there are there are some EQ curves in there as well um, um, for DJ applications as well There's as DJ playback, right? Yep, DJ playback. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Specific I uh, bandpass filters as well. Go ahead, John. I think one thing to note, which is great too, is the the inputs are phantom powered. So if you're a musician and you have a pretty sweet condenser mic that you want to use. You can you can plug that straight into the input, which is a great option to have on these systems as well. True. Yeah. True, yeah. Well, I know. Yeah. Um, one one preset that I really like. I mean, this is not DJ related, but uh, the the kick drum preset for uh, for for in, in the tone match presets that you guys have. Uh, the, those kick drums make those microphones sound super good. Like. Uh, like the D6, how is this D6, a beta 52, sure. Um, and they make it, those presets uh, make, make your kick drum sound really, really good. 
Yeah, that makes such a huge difference in your mix, doesn't it? When you can yes. like translate that like kind of thumping in the chest to Absolutely. to your audience, uh, it just yes. it just brings everything alive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we talked. I was going to talk about monitoring. How you guys are doing your monitoring? Other than headphones, we talked about an S one. How you can use an L one Pro eight as a monitoring system. Mm -hmm. um, but let's move on to audio quality. Uh, specifically of an L1 Pro 32 um, plus a sub two, because those are the systems that you guys have been using. Um, and we're not going to throw any of the systems under the bus, John or Marco, but we're just talk to me, John, about like, about what you're hearing when you're, when you're using your L1 Pro 32 systems. Yeah, of course. Well, keep in mind, these systems have 180 degrees worth of coverage. So when you have these set up on either side of you, left and right, you have your own monitor system happening, which is which is so great. It's almost like you're living on the dance floor with the crowd and you're able to hear all these, you know, certain parts of songs. Like I'm hearing parts of songs that I've never even heard before on these systems, like instruments and like little things. They just shine right through right through the drivers. It's it's amazing. Um, and pretty much once you're using these, you really don't have to have a monitor because where you have them placed you're actually hearing the sound like pretty, pretty well as far as what it's being pushed out and what's coming back to you. How about you, Marco? Yeah. How would you well, describe what you're hearing? It's, um, I really love the sound pressure level that these kind of ones have. I mean, I, I, uh, when I got them, I try here at home and I put the level, you know, you should put it at 12 and I fire my mixer and, uh, you know, it was like, whoa. This is super good. The low frequency response is is amazing. You know, for for these uh, the electronic music that I like to play, um, it, it's it's and and like I always say, it's it's a uh, it's a difference with within other systems, but you hear almost like a recording quality, like a studio quality. How they how they want to make the track, and you hear that. Like like John said, you hear parts that you won't hear in other systems. But I hear you will hear it. Yeah, it's very true. It makes mm -hmm. uh, DJing that much more enjoyable to act when you're actually hearing the music played back extremely well, like through these systems for sure. Yeah, there right. we we talk about um, um, vocal clarity or instrument separation mm -hmm. um, when we talk about these systems uh, because it's true. Um, there's a crossover point between the sub and the the mid high array of 200 Hertz. So one thing that we were able to achieve was, was really a separation of those frequencies, but still working together as one piece of music. So, uh, you know, your kick drums, bass guitars, left hand keyboard parts, you're hearing coming thumping out of the subwoofers, um, whether it's the sub two that goes down to 37 Hertz or yep. the, uh, the L1 pro 16 that goes down to 42 Hertz. Like it's, yeah. it's a, it's a well tuned, so um, and just really powerful low end experience. And then everything else you're hearing come out of the mid high array, you know, guitar parts, vocals, uh, keyboard parts, percussion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, that, that all really shines when you're surfing through different genres of music at certain events as well. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a real, um, I remember listening to lots of the test tunes when we, you know, we're listening every single day throughout the entire development of these tunes and A being against our legacy systems, um, right. just hearing things in songs that you've heard yeah. a thousand times that you've never heard before. Yeah, yeah it's so true. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like it, it gets the, the real separation of all the instruments. It gives you the space uh, on the mix uh, of the music, you know? It, when you play a track, it gives you a, a good separation of all the instruments, so you hear it um, more, more full, more complete. And um, let's talk about the 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 volume, the SPL. Um, were you able to kind of keep up with the room with your um, L1 Pro 32? So we're talking 128 max SPL with a an yeah. L1 Pro 32 plus a sub two. How yeah, Marco, I, Marco, I don't know about you, but I I, I was fortunate enough to have a couple events um, with a pretty a pretty stacked guest count um, and a full dance floor. 
and we were pumping and it felt good and it felt good to actually push these systems to the limit during such a you know a trying time right now um and being able to just look down and not seeing any sort of clipping happening is is paramount honestly Great. Like these systems push okay. and it, it feels good it really does yeah, the pro i imagine the the uh the pro 32 because of that straight line array um and the fact that it's got 32 drivers um right powered by 480 watts uh 1480 if you include the subwoofer because we've got a thousand watts going to the sub um that thing yeah. throws really far so it's got a great what we call drop off over distance um and we found with um a few of our beta testers who were able to do outdoor events um that it works really really well with outdoor spaces as you guys know sound can die pretty pretty quickly when you're outdoors right. um right <laughs> the, and, uh, and, <laughs> yeah well no with these ones are it's 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 hard to get that that, that the, the long throw that they have is uh it's very good even with the model two of like before you know it's uh, it's it's very it's a it's very different. That's why um, I like how, you know, I, the height is a little bit more than the, the Model 2. A little bit more. Right? Yeah. So um, DJs usually try to raise their speakers um, above the heads of the of the, the crowd. So it, so it goes all the way to the back. Uh, with these ones, you don't have to do that. You don't have to lose that fidelity in the front and just go all the way to the back to the room. Right. Mm -hmm. Very we call, true. That, we call that shadowing, right? When you're mm -hmm. you have a really tall person standing in front of the speakers, um, they sort of right. absorb that beam and uh, folks standing behind the tall person don't get to hear it the way that it was supposed to be heard. Right. Um, and which yes. is exactly the reason why it is as tall as it is. You're right, Marco. Yeah. Good. Um, John, are you finding that the sub two, so as DJs, you guys are playing some, some content that has a lot of low end, you know, some stuff that we yeah. can't even really hear. We can maybe kind of feel it, but uh, how was the sub two able to deliver that low end, low frequency content, John? It, it, pretty amazingly. Uh, the the other thing is I I push these to the limit in a pretty big room where I was able to go to the other side of the room and still feel the low end hitting you in the stomach and hitting you in the chest along with the clarity of of, of the, the mids and the highs it, it was just it was mind-blowing to know that the sound is still carrying that far into a room without being you know overwhelming or or too much it just sounded great it was like oh i'm actually listening to the music back here this is like really this is really good to hear these things and then once you get closer it was like it was even better and you were kind of just like living in into the sound um so again like the the low end response with these new these new subs are are phenomenal for you know surfing through rock even jazz and then once you get into that top 40 and even hip hop with the heavy bass stuff like it's great and i'm not seeing any clipping either which makes me happy awesome how about you, Marco? Yeah, it's very good. I mean, I'm I'm very very good fan of uh, the F1 series, and the F1 subwoofer, and the A A12. Um, but when I hear this one too, um, it's like it's amazing how you guys did that on the racetrack uh, woofer. Uh, first thing is like, this looks uh, out of this out of space. You know, it's it, it's amazing and it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, the bass is, is, is something that probably a lot of uh, our customers and DJs in the back wanted more on the, on the L1 series, and uh, they're going to be very, very happy with, with, with the new subwoofers. And even the, L, the, you know, when I opened the L1 Pro 8, and I hear it for the first time, I was like, wow, it, it's, it's um, you know, and then it's a progression going up, so... A really good job there. Yeah, the I mean, we've talked about it in previous um, live sessions, and also some of our some of our content that's available on YouTube and on pro.bose.com. The idea behind the racetrack is to just kind of maximize that speaker cone surface area and the excursion area um, to 
to give us a more compact package to to pick up. Um, it's got a better center of gravity, um, easy. It takes up less room on stage, um, easy to bring from your vehicle to the venue, um, and still gives you. I always used to call it this surprising size to performance ratio. Like, right. you know, like you said, Marco, like you look at it and you're yeah. like, what the heck is that thing? And then you yeah. hear it and you're like, wow, holy smokes. That wow. uh, yeah. sounds really good. Um, and, 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 and it's my impression, but doesn't heat up that much like others and woofers or, or like, you know, it's, it, and once you, you have it going, it's like, it, it, it has a lot of power and it's not, you, like you said, you didn't see the clipping or anything. It's very good. Yeah, it it, it moves moves a lot of air. And uh, mm -hmm. kudos to the engineering team. They were able to to design um, a low frequency driver, a uh, low frequency subwoofer that uh, is able to 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 cool itself and and be as compact as possible and sound amazing right. too. Yeah. Do um do guests come up to you guys and? You know, I know like sometimes they'll request songs, but do they ever come up to you um, to, to comment on how good or uh, other comments about audio quality, John? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest. And the only times I've ever gotten feedback on sound is when I have my Bose systems out. Like that is... 100% me being real and honest and serious. And it's because it's true, right? Like it sounds great. And you're also able, <laughs> no, not at all. I swear, like, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's real, you know, and, and having fellow photographers at, at these events and, and event coordinators, just like, they've they've spoken up they're like these sound this sounds great like they look great you know and and that's something that i take in with me when i leave those events as well and also seeing older couples kind of like having conversations in in front of these speakers while they're still pushing right like that's amazing too that you're able to not just like you're not sitting there like covering your ears and moving out the way you know like with a lot of other systems that happens but right. not with these. Yeah, that's yeah. so. Just to get technical, what John's talking about is uh, is a line source versus a point source. Um, where yeah. a line source, we have many drivers in in the articulated array working together um, to kind of propagate sound more efficiently throughout the room, so that they don't need mm -hmm. to be screaming at the source. Um, whereas a point source has to work a little bit harder to to propagate that sound the same way. We get less drop off over distance with the uh, the line source. Um, how about you, Marco? Right. Do guests come up to right. you and talk about what they're hearing. Yes, and 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 it's funny. Let's say I, uh, we we do some of our clubby sessions, and we do it at a, a bar or uh, uh, you know banquet hall. The owner comes and the or the manager is like, "Okay, you're gonna leave those here. We, you know, it sounds much better than our house system. Uh, you know, and he sees how easy it's to set up um, the." Look what John was saying, you know, there's no ear fatigue. Once you're done with the gig, your ears are like, no, you don't have that ringing. Um, so that's that's another advantage. And guess, guess they, all the time they come. I, I hear all, um, a lot of DJs, they get more tips when they use the book system. Uh, you know, the, the the people who pay for the actual wedding, the, the parents or the grandparents, they come and they say thank you, and you know, it's um it's good. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Um, we should put that as a bullet point on the website. Get <laughs> right. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Um. So, let's talk. Let's focus um, subwoofers for a sec and um. Um, maybe go back to monitoring systems or or like micro PAs, smaller systems that you could use in a in a cocktail kind of environment, and specifically pairing an S1 with a sub one. Um, the uh, so we've got one more video queued up just to show the the preferred or the suggested signal flow when you're using um, an S1 when paired with a sub one or sub two. Um, so if we can play that video, and I'll narrate as we. As we as we view, 
So here's a, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a pole mount on the side of sub one and sub two. And we also sell a threaded speaker pole that will be available in February. So you can mount. Um, so we recommend that your audio source go in through the sub. So go into the line in, and then your line out goes to your S1. And here we're plugging into channel one on our mounted S1. And then on the sub one, if there's a line out EQ options, there's high, uh, there's high frequency, uh, high pass frequency, high, high pass filter or full bandwidth. If you press and hold that button, you'll see that it, the light turned green. That is a, uh, a special crossover frequency at 150 Hertz that we have optimized for S1. So um, you simply press and hold the, the uh, line out EQ button for five seconds. And then you'll see that light, that light illuminate green. Um, the reason that you, we want you to go in through the sub is because this allows the S1 to not work quite as hard, so it doesn't have to work on all those low frequencies. The sub 1 or sub 2 can take care of it, and then the S1 can just kind of shine in the, in the mid-high uh, array band, mid-high frequency. I'm, I'm 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 super excited for that option. Yeah. I I didn't I I didn't even think of of doing that until I saw Marco's photo of actually him running it and set up. Now I I'm gonna set mine up and do that too because depending on certain events and and the the size of the events that is an ultimate portable system right yeah. there that I'm yeah. excited to use. Yeah, there's there yeah. are so many S1 users out there, um, a lot mm -hmm. of which often ask us for a subwoofer solution. And while we were developing the L1 Pro family, um, we thought we should address these folks as well. And this seemed like a nice solution. So you've, you've set this up yeah. and have been using it, Marco, for a little while? Perfect timing. Yeah, we, we set, I set it up to try it and, and you know, I was waiting for it. Uh, I, it's, it's, it, I, I think the demand's gonna be big on that. Um, as, like you say, it's a lot of S1 Pro users are there and, um, and they need a subwoofer, and this is a perfect, like you know, small compact uh, PA system to to go out there. Cool. Um, how would you would you use this for just smaller rooms? Or would you use it for a monitoring system? How would you use this in a DJ gig, John? I, I think or it's gonna be a little, a little you know, uh, you know, it's gonna be for yeah. I think you can use it anywhere. I, I see this this being used anywhere, because uh, this, these subwoofers are very powerful and they're gonna carry a lot of the heavy weight of the gig, right? So, you know, backyard parties, uh, house parties, move to small bar venues. Uh, you know, and portability is is it it is the key. So, in and out to a gig, just put the small system, you're done. Cool. Yeah, I'm 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 stoked to set two of them up. I always like to have two of everything, and for for again like smaller intimate events, even corporate events too. Right. You know, just having just having that small footprint with with the sound and the the low end being able to kind of shine through is gonna be is gonna be fantastic. Awesome. Um, that's pretty much the end of our agenda, guys. Um, any. Cool. Any final thoughts before we before we wrap it up? I'll go to you first, John. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Honestly, like being involved with like the whole the whole beta testing all the way back a couple of years ago now, Craig. Like seeing these these things come together, and especially the mixing board. You know the versatility of the inputs, the outputs, the sub match, and and finally being able to hear it and testing it out in, in, in real world events. I'm floored, man. And I'm, I'm really excited to continue on using these for my events moving forward. That's awesome. How about you, Marco? Yeah, same thing. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And, um, I want to say actually hi to a lot of people from our live music team, uh, both live music team, the, are join us and um, they asked me to say hi, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, hi, mom. Yeah, yeah, this is this is great. Um, you know, all these products. We when when L one came out, like what's 15 years ago, um, we created something new for for the music industry, and 
it has grown so much. And now we have these new standards for this uh, segment in the music industry. I think, I think our customers are going to be very happy with them. Yeah, we were excited as more and more products get out there into the real, real world. Um, L1 Pro 32 has just gotten out there. Um, right. the sub two, as I mentioned, will be start shipping in uh, early February. So we're really excited about that. And, um, you know, fingers crossed that uh, 2021 brings us some better luck gig wise and that you guys and everybody out there will be way busier than we were in 2020. Um, yes. Because I think I think the world needs it, quite honestly. For sure. you know? Yes, we all need it. Um, so um, that is pretty much it. Um, the was going to go to some Q and A. I'm just taking a look at the chat right here. Um, I see a question from uh, Pedro talking about L1 Pro systems with guitar effects pedals. Um, how how does L1 Pro behave with heavy guitar sounds? So if you there are some there's some content out there um, by uh, Pete Thorne and um, Jay Leonard J and um, some other users as well, some other YouTube reviewers where they used the L1 Pro 8 as a sort of an FR FR monitor. Um, mm -hmm. FR FR means flat response, um, full range flat response. So the idea being you plug in your modeler um, into an FR FR and you can kind of simulate, you can deliver what the modeler promises you, um, which is usually you know, an amp type, a uh, cabinet type, a speaker type, and sometimes even microphone placement type. And the mm -hmm. demos, I will say, are really, really compelling. Um, and although there's no content out there yet with L1 Pro 32, um, I can tell you that it's coming um, where we're going to demo similar similar things. So um, using an L1 Pro system as a guitar monitor is, is a great application. So I hope that oh. answered your question, mm -hmm. uh, Pedro. Let's see. People love the racetrack driver. Thank you, Pedro. Um, are Bose L1 Pro systems taller than the Model 2? So the uh, the Model 2 system is just a hair under um, uh, seven feet, and the L1 Pro 32 is just a hair over seven feet. So it's just a tiny bit taller, as we talked about before. That idea being mm -hmm. to get over even the tallest of, of guests so that we're not having right. that audio shadowing. Um, some people are asking if there's going to be a Spanish version of this video. Um, Marco, would you like to translate the entire video for us when yeah, we're done? We can... Sure. We work on it. <laughs> Type uh, it up. Um, Tom Lian, a uh, brilliant, is asking uh, about which model they should use in churches. Uh, it depends on the size of the church. Um, yeah, I agree. I would say you are, uh, let's assume it's a mid-size to big church. You're, you're pretty safe with a, uh, an L1 Pro 16 uh, or an L1 Pro 32 right. as well. Also, uh, yeah, also, what, what are we running through it too, right? Like, do you have a full band? Exactly. Or is it just... Is it just, you know, a priest with a, a lapel mic or any, you know, some readings? All of these systems, it's it's going to depend on what, what application is being used. That's all. Yeah. Also, too, the, um, the seat placement, because some churches, they have a seat like auditorium in the balcony. So you might need probably the, the 16, I think, for that, that, that case will be better. Right, if you have the stage higher, and yes, the exactly because lower. of the J shape versus the straight line array, right. you want you want that that beam to uh, hit the ears of your of your audience. Right. Mm -hmm. totally. Um, let's see. The difference between the Model Two and the Pro Thirty Two. Um, the Model Two, we've got twenty four, uh, two and two and a quarter inch drivers in the articulated fashion versus 32 two inch drivers in the Model 2. Um, we're louder going up to 128 dB max SPL versus 121 dB max SPL um, in a Model 2. Um, we are 60% lighter 
than we are with the Model 2. Um, and then yes. we've got the full onboard mixer versus um, just the single input. Um, racetrack woofer, uh, what is the racetrack woofer made of? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a blend, it's a paper blend uh, that we developed, our engineering team developed. Um, it looks tough. I would say it absolutely is. It's really tough. Some of the the validation and reliability testing that these have to go through um, that include uh, extreme temperatures, uh, drop testing, transportation testing, um, power testing, unbelievable rounds of power testing. Um, so tough is a good word to describe. Um, tough, but oh, so sweet. <laughs> and oh, so sleek. And oh, so sleek. Like, yeah, good one. Um, and that's pretty much it. We're just about out of time here. Um, I would like to thank you, John, and thank you, Marco, for bringing your expertise to our forum. Um, we're going to continue to work together and uh, always value your input. You've got some great insights. Um, thank you, Craig. Anything that you want to plug that you've got coming up? Wish I could. <laughs> no. I know you're working on a new record with no trigger, right? Yes. Yes, currently able to to get into a studio and and work on a record, which is great. It's it's the event side of things, which is really tough. But uh, looking forward to later in the year and even you know events that are kind of booking into twenty twenty two at this point right now. So, wow, well that's not bad to have those on your yeah. calendar anyway. Right? Yeah, How about yeah, that's great. Anything coming up? Yeah, I don't know if, uh, I mean, for the people that don't know me, um, they can find me as a Revo DJ and I have, uh, I have a couple of songs. I've been working all these, this, this nine months on, uh, on, on creating new music for, to do a, a shift a little bit, new website. And, uh, so something will come out by the end of the month. Cool. I should mention, mm -hmm. uh, that's, thanks for reminding me the, um, uh, the track that we use for the cardio demo, that's one of Marco's tracks. Just yeah, that was a great. production with one of my friends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we mm -hmm. uh, wanted something that kind of has lots of low end, uh, low frequency content. And uh, Marco delivered with a, a really killer sounding track. So uh, thank you guys again. Thanks to uh, the folks on the production team for um, allowing us to share all this information and play our videos. And thanks to all of you guys for for tuning in. Um, we will, this will be on YouTube eventually um, within the next couple of days or so. And um, in the meantime, go to pro.bose.com, click on the L1 section, and you can read and learn and watch all about the L1 Pro systems and the Sub 1 and Sub 2, as well as the many accessories that we have available for the whole family. Um, so that's it. I'm Craig. Um, that's John. This is Marco. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.